In Malachi, uh, let's look at the background in Matthew Henry commentary. God's prophets were his witnesses to his church, each in his day for several ages, witnesses for him and his authority, witnesses against sin and sinners, attesting the true intents of God's providences in his dealings with his people. Then in the kind intentions of his grace concerning his church in the days of the Messiah, to whom all the prophets bore witness, for they all agreed in their testimony, and now we have only one witness more to call. And we have done with our evidence, and though he be the last, and in him prophecy ceased, yet the spirit of prophecy shines as clearly, as strongly, as brightly in him as in any that went before, and his testimony challenges an equal regard. The Jews say prophecy continued forty years under the second temple, and this prophet they called the seal of prophecy, because in him the series or succession of prophets broke off and came to a period. God wisely ordered it so that the divine inspiration should cease for some ages before the coming of the Messiah, that that great prophet might appear the more conspicuous and distinguishable and be the more welcome. Let us consider, one, the person of the prophet. We have only his name, Malachi, in no account of his country or parentage. Malachi signifies my angel or my messenger. Prophets were messengers, God's messengers. This prophet was so. I skipped over some parts. His name is the very same with that which we find in the original. Let's see. The, the tradition of some of the ancients is that he was of the tribe of Zebulun and that he died young. The scope of the prophecy. Haggai and Zechariah were sent to reprove the people for delaying to build the temple. Malachi was sent to reprove them for the neglect of it when it was built and for their profanation of the temple service. For from idolatry and superstition, they ran into the other extreme of impiety and irreligion. And the sins he witnesses against are the same that we find complained of in Nehemiah's time, with whom it is probable he was contemporary. And now that prophecy was to cease, he speaks more clearly of the Messiah as nigh at hand, than any of the other prophet of any other of the prophets had done, and concludes with a direction to the people of God to keep in remembrance the law of Moses while they were in expectation of the gospel of Christ. It's always important to get the background of a book before we dive in. Otherwise, uh, this is probably my ninth time reading Malachi, and I don't, I still can't remember much about it. So reading this chapter, it was a good reminder. Uh, he was rebuking the priests. Why are you sacrificing the blind, the lame, the sick animals to God? Basically giving to God the kind of their leftovers. And that's the rebuke the nation needed. And for us today, uh, that's what the church is for. We all have blind spots. We all not only to call people in the church, but also people out of the church to repent, to turn from your sins. And we are to give our lives, the best of our lives to God uh, because he saved us and loves us. Instead of just kind of living our own lives where we are in a sense God and then we push God to the side and just don't honor him. So proclaim the truth uh, out of love to others that they may repent and turn and honor the Lord. And for some of us, or all of us, always take heed when someone else is to point out our faults. Uh, yeah. May the Lord give us the humility to receive their rebuke and to, to repent in our lives. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the book of Malachi. Uh, I'm looking forward to studying it and to see what you have to say. Oh, help us to learn from his way of warning and rebuking his people out of love. And help us to do the same, follow in the example, and to receive rebuke and humility. We pray and ask all this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen.